the energy storage marketplace is one that's fast growing and also fast evolving. It's also one in which there's a wide variety of technologies and applications for different energy storage technologies. Welcome to Energy Storage Europe 2019 here in Dusseldorf, where PV Magazine, along with an expert jury, have selected five top products and technologies, all of them on display here on the trade show floor, for you to make up your mind which ones you think will make a difference in the energy storage market of the future. Mark Higgins is the COO with uh, Stratagen. Mark, um, you are one of our jurors for the Energy Storage Highlights Europe this year. What, what do you kind of make of the top ranked, ranked entries? Was there a particular theme? Yeah, that's a great question. I think if there was a particular theme this year, it would be around systems. I think we are um, moving beyond thinking of storage as an individual standalone technology and moving into a world where we're trying to find ways that storage is integrated in with broader systems. So be it the concept of e-mobility paired with stationary storage, uh, Vattenfall's project where they're looking at integrating storage into a wind asset, um, or some of the other applications we saw where we were looking at like district heating and cooling and, and applications of bringing that into um, you know, the electric power sector. Everything that we were looking at this year has a systems element to it. The unique is, is really we have a system which is able to do the sector coupling itself where we are combining electricity, heat and cold and vice versa. And that's the first system where we really have uh, sector coupling, where we, which enable to do the sector coupling itself. Because we are using CO2, we don't have to go up to extremely high temperature. We are at around 100 degrees C and we don't have to go re uh, down very deeply, so we are at zero degrees C. Uh, so we are on a low density, which makes the whole system, the product, much easier, much simpler. There was a, a project in the Maldives that, that Trina has been recognized for um, in these energy storage highlights. Uh, well, tell me a little bit about the storage, uh, about the solution, about the project. What makes it, makes it special? It's very special because it's uh, 27 islands and they're very different. So it's not uh, one system and you can copy and paste it. So it's 27 different microgrids. So different energy demand, different rooftops, different buildings, different situations. And so it's a really big challenge to fix all the 27 islands uh, in one goal, so to, to get the target. Okay, Stefan Fahlmeier from Fenecon is uh, deeply involved with the Open EMS Association, um, one of the highlights this year from the Energy Storage Europe show. Um, Stefan, can you tell me how does an Open EMS uh, work? What's its importance? Well, we are talking about an open source energy management system. So that means uh, everybody is developing energy management systems because it's required for, for every part of sector coupling, of storage, of immobility, e of heat, of integrating all of this. And um, we see that everybody is starting again over from scratch. So uh, companies are developing again from zero. They are implementing everything. And we realized it's making sense to, to create a platform, a common platform that everybody can use on use it and uh, base their solutions on that. Why can't everyone just go off and innovate by themselves? Well, there, there's so much groundwork to do, um, so much implementing protocols, so much work that has nothing to do with the actual value that you want to add to the product. So for example, we were talking with companies, they want to build virtual power plants. The first thing they had to do was to evaluate the hardware. They started to write applications, write drivers, but their actual knowledge was that virtual power plant, the actual algorithm. And they had to waste like half a year, maybe one year of development time just on groundworks because there was nothing available. For us, it's really like a lighthouse project, of course. We are trying to get one step further than where we have been so far. So not only primary frequency response, but rather uh, new markets, things like virtual inertia. We know that we will need it, but at the moment there is not really a market. And we also see that the wind turbines by itself have some technical limitations. So they are only able to provide virtual inertia for a certain amount of seconds, but then uh, using the battery system to provide for a longer time, for example, um, or to really give the wind turbine the time to recover, that is something that we are trying to 
to, to yeah, sort out with the project. The upcoming cars um, are increasing their charging power um, because no one wants to wait uh, too long on the charging pole. So this is why the car manufacturing are increasing their, their charging power and we are able to charge with our system up to 320 kilowatt, which made nowadays is not really um, um, necessary for every car manufacturer, but we're also able to downscale. And the ADS Tech um, um, storage itself, battery itself, is, is unique in terms of having a very small footprint for being quite a small unit. What, why is that important? The small footprint is, um, is uh, one issue that uh, uh, if you're thinking of charging on, uh, on highways, the, the, the footprint is not that uh, relevant. But if you're thinking of charging on fold calls, on, on gas stations or inner city charging, um, the footprint is really, really relevant compared if you have a, a big battery energy storage uh, and a conventional DC charger. So the integration is one of the big issues that we solved. Uh, and it's also a big technical issue that we solved and uh, we think this is one of the most important things also to have a small size system. There is, I think, a, uh, an increasing convergence of the transport sector and the electricity sector, driven that all the car OEMs are now committing to large shares of their products to be electrified. And that will have a big disruption in the next decade on the energy sector and will mean opportunities and challenges for the energy storage space. And uh, what we saw here is one of the opportunities that stationary storage players can address because it's opening a whole new demand for stationary storage uh, units. And and it's uh, that these high-powered new EVs, if they're to be charged quickly, really require a huge amount of capacity on the grid. And is that the kind of role that storage will play? Absolutely. I mean, it's uh, helping really to um, have e-mobility happening because if you have to queue up at the uh, fast charging station because uh, there, there cannot be enough fast charging stations to uh, service all the cars that would like to refill the cars. I think that would be a big barrier for widespread e-mobility applications. So that's definitely a good thing for energy storage and for the e-mobility sector and the uh, environment uh, as a whole.